Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Minecraft Java video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Optifine, which is a performance and shader mod for Minecraft Java Edition. As you guys can see, I am on the latest release of Minecraft Java Edition, which is version 1.18.1. And we're going to take a look at the best FPS settings for Optifine for Minecraft Java Edition version 1.18.1. And this is also going to work for version 1.18 as well if you guys are using that version of Optifine. These are going to be the best optimal settings for Optifine to be able to give us some nice FPS performance boosts in our game. So if you guys are using Optifine and you're finding that you're still getting low FPS, then hopefully these Optifine settings are going to be the best Optifine settings to be able to get better FPS in your Minecraft game and we're going to do this on the latest release which is version 1.18.1. I'm also going to quickly show you guys how to download Optifine for Minecraft version 1.18.1 and how to install Optifine for Minecraft version 1.18.1. Then I'm going to show you guys how to set everything up and then we're going to look at the best settings for Optifine in Minecraft Java 1.18.1. All right, so as you guys can see, I am in a vanilla-based world right now, and I'm not using any mods whatsoever, so I haven't actually got Optifine enabled. This is just the regular default vanilla Minecraft. So I'm gonna press F3 on my keyboard. So as you guys can see, this is Minecraft 1.18.1 slash vanilla, and I'm getting close to 680 FPS, and this is on the default settings. I have actually gone ahead and turned down my render distance to eight, but if I was to set it to the default settings on 12, then we can see that my FPS would be somewhere in the region of 420 to 450 FPS on average. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna install Optifine for Minecraft Minecraft Java Edition version 1.18.1 and then we're going to look at the FPS we're going to get in our default settings and then I'm going to tweak the settings and I'm going to show you guys what kind of FPS I can get with the optimal best FPS settings for Optifine in version 1.18.1 so let me go ahead and first of all download Optifine and then install Optifine for 1.18.1 and then we can look at the best FPS settings for Optifine on version 1.18.1. All right, so if you guys want to download Optifine for version 1.18.1, just head over to the main website, which is optifine.net. As you guys can see, I've gone to the main website of Optifine, click on downloads, and then you should see Minecraft 1.18.1. If you click on this link over here that says preview versions, then you should be able to download the latest release of Optifine for Minecraft 1.18.1. You can also click on the change log over here and read up about the information for that release. For example, you're looking for Optifine on version 1.18, then you can go ahead and download this version which is the Optifine HD UH3 but for now let's go ahead and download this version which is for Minecraft Java 1.18.1 I'm going to click on download and then I'll place the file on my desktop all right so as you guys can see the download has finished and I have placed the preview Optifine version 1.18.1 file on my desktop now to open this file you are going to require Java to be installed in your system. I will leave a link in the description of how you can go ahead and download Java OpenJDK and you can get the installer for that and then that should allow you to open up the jar files which will allow you to open up the installer jar files for stuff like Optifine, Iris, Shaders, Fabric and Forge. So let's go ahead and double click on this jar file and it should open up the Optifine installer. At this point, if you guys have not yet run Minecraft 1.18 using the default Minecraft launcher, then you should go ahead into the Minecraft launcher and actually run the game for the first time so it creates the files for it. Then we can click on install and that should install Optifine for Minecraft version 1.18.1. All right, so we can now get rid of this file and now we can go inside the new Minecraft launcher. You guys probably will notice that at the bottom left, it does say Optifine and it should say the release number as well. If we click on the installation section over here, it should also state Optifine in this section as well. And it should say 1.18.1 Optifine HDU H4 P1. Now this is the current version of Optifine, which is available as of today. If you guys are watching this video in the future, chances are that this is going to be a different version to what you're seeing me install right now so just bear that in mind at this point if you guys are wanting to install shaders you can do so by clicking on the folder icon like so that should open up your default minecraft directory and then you can just go into the shader packs folder now if you don't have a shader packs folder don't worry you can just right click on an empty space click on new click on folder and then just rename that to shader packs you can then head on over to the curse forge website and go to the minecraft section click on customization and choose one of the different shaders 
that are listed from this website or you can get shaders from other websites as well and then just download them and then you can just place the zip files inside the shader packs folder so if i go inside my shader packs folder you guys can see that i have got the astralex shaders in here and the red hat shaders in here as well and basically we are placing the shader zip file inside the shader packs folder like it's done it for mine okay let's close this down we can now actually go ahead and launch the game so just hover over where it says optifine and then click on play if you guys do want to use optifine with either fabric or forge i have also done videos for them i will place the links to those video in the description so you guys can watch them if you guys do want to play with mods and shaders at the same time so let's go ahead and click on play and wait for the game to now load up all right so as you guys can see the game's now loaded up and it does say minecraft 1.18.1 and in brackets it says modded let's maximize this window if we go to the options menu and click on video settings at the bottom it should say optifine followed by the version number and you should be able to tell that you have got optifine installed as well because we do have a shaders button here and the video settings look slightly different to what the normal minecraft game look like so we do know that optifine is installed and it should be working at this point you can go ahead and activate your shaders but for now what i'm going to do i'm actually going to disable the shaders because i do want to have a look at my fps and try and get the most fps using optifine so let's actually enter the same world that we were in before and have a look at the fps that we are getting now with optifine installed and these are going to be the default settings and with optifine installed we are now getting in the region of 620 fps and it's actually touching 640 fps now this is much higher than what we were seeing previously with the vanilla game and the fps i was getting so now i'm going to go inside my optifine settings i'm going to go into options click on video settings and now now I'm going to start changing things around to try and maximize my FPS. So the very first thing I'm going to change is the graphics. I'm going to change it from fancy to fast and that is basically going to help me get better FPS. I'm also going to reduce my render distance from 12. I'm going to put it on 6 because I have found that 6 is a nice sweet spot to be able to see far ahead in the distance and achieve playability and get good FPS in your game. For the simulation distance, this is optional, but I would recommend to actually turn this down, especially if you are on a low end system. So the lowest setting that we can change for the simulation distance is five. So let's go ahead and do that now. For the smooth lighting, I would actually leave that because that can affect some of the blocks if you were to turn the smooth lighting off. So let's just leave the smooth lighting on for now. Same thing for the brightness as well. We can leave it as it is. You can play it on the bright setting or moody setting. It does not matter but normally I do play on the moody setting because my monitor brightness is quite bright, but that is completely optional for you guys. And same for the GUI scale as well. It doesn't really impact the game's performance as such. The entity shadows, you can go ahead and turn that off as well. It won't have that much of a major impact on your FPS. And for the attack indicator, we can leave that option as it is. The dynamic lights, you can also go ahead and change that to fast if you guys want your surroundings to light up every time you are holding a light emitting object like a torch for example or you can leave it off if that's what you guys want to do so let's just turn it to the fast setting for now okay so now that we have changed the settings in this section we can now go into the detail section and start changing the options in the detail settings to try and give ourselves much more of a fps boost so for the clouds i do like to play with the clouds turned to off in case it actually has an impact on our performance so you can go ahead and do that if you guys do want to use clouds you can obviously change it to the default setting or fast if your system does allow it and you are getting good enough fps you can play that with fancy setting as well but for now let's change that to off and for the trees as well we're going to set that to the lower setting which is fast again same thing for the rain and snow change that to off because it is allowing us to change that and turn the setting for rain and snow to off for, again for the sky as well we can do that we can turn it off as well if you hover over these settings it does actually tell you what options you can select for each of them and for the stars we're going to do the same thing turn that to off as well sun and moon turn that off and then show capes that is optional but let's go ahead and turn that off as well for the fog setting something that i have found interesting is that if you actually leave that on the fancy setting and leave the fog at 0.8 it actually gives you better fps compared to if you were to turn that off 
So if you guys are playing with fog turned off, that's going to give you lower FPS than if you actually turn it on. So go ahead and either change that to fancy if you have the option, leave fog start to 0.8. If it's not giving you the fancy option, for some computers it might not have the option, then go ahead and select the fast option. If you were to switch that off, then your FPS will actually go lower. So leave that on either fast or fancy. View bobbing is also optional, we can leave that on and held item tooltips as well, that is optional as well. Auto save indicator, I would actually go ahead and turn that off because we don't want anything interrupting us when we're playing and we don't want anything to cause a lag spike just in case. Swarm colors, again, we can turn that off as well. Alternate blocks as well, we can turn that off. And same for vignette as well. And entity distance, let's go ahead and reduce that to the lower setting. And same thing for the biome blend. I'm going to change that to the lower setting, which is the fastest option of being off. So as you guys can see, these are the detail settings options which i have selected to try and maximize my fps in my game okay let's click on done and now we can actually move on to the next section which is animations now in the animation section you can actually go ahead and turn each of these different animations to off or on individually or you can click on this button that says all off, which is going to basically select the lower setting for each of the animations. You will notice that the particles, it does also say minimal because that is the lower setting for the particles as well. So let's just go ahead and do that and select all off for the animations as well. And then let's click on done. We can now move on to the next section, which is the quality section. And similar to how I've done with the other sections, I'm going to go ahead and reduce all of these settings to the lowest possible setting which the system allows me to do. So I'm gonna quickly do that now and I'll be right back. All right, so as you guys can see, I've actually gone ahead and changed all of the settings to off and moved all of the sliders to the left hand side to go and change everything to the lowest possible setting. So once you have done that, click on done. And now we can move on to the next section, which is the performance section. And now in this section, we need to turn on two of the settings, which is the fast render option and the fast math option as well. And you can go ahead and enable smart animations as well because that is going to give you some nice FPS. Now, one setting is quite interesting because if you turn this on, for me, it gives me better FPS in windowed mode. And when I switch to full screen mode, it actually drops my FPS. So if you actually turn on this setting, which is the render regions, it is supposed to give us better FPS. However, for me, it only does that when I play in windowed mode. All right, so these are the options that I would actually recommend to turn on and leave the other ones off if you want to. You can obviously go ahead and start turning them on once you are comfortable with all of the rest of your settings. So as you guys can see, I've turned on the render regions, smart animations, fast render and fast math as well. And for the other options, I've left them off for now. All right, so let's click on done and let's go into the other option here. In this section, you can go ahead and increase the auto save time to 12 minutes if you want to do that as you guys can see it does actually say autosave may generate lag spikes depending on the render distance the world is also saved when the game menu is opened so by actually increasing the autosave time limit you can avoid lag spikes however if you're not seeing that many lag spikes you can go ahead and reduce the autosave limit let's also go ahead and click this button here which says show gl errors and let's switch that to off as well we can also go ahead and switch the setting to off as well where it says weather. As you guys can see, it says when it's off, the weather is not active and it is faster. So let's go ahead and switch the weather to off as well. You can also change your full screen mode resolution here if you guys are playing in the full screen option. Okay, so let's click on done. And now let's click on done as well again to have a look at what kind of FPS we can now get inside our game. All right, so as you guys can see, my FPS has actually shot up and now I'm getting close to 1,800 FPS in my game. And this is a much higher FPS than I was getting before. So as you guys remember, I was getting close to 600 plus FPS on the default options, but now I am getting 1,800 FPS, which is almost three times as much FPS I was getting. So if you guys are on a low end machine and your FPS is not that great on the default set, settings then you can try out the settings which i've just shown you and you should be able to get higher fps 
on your system, there are a few more tweaks which we can now do to try and get even more FPS in our game. So let's do that now. Click on options and then go to the accessibility settings. And now we can actually turn on this setting which says hide lightning flashes. So let's go ahead and turn the hide lightning flashes option to on. Because as you guys can see, it says prevents lightning bolts from making the sky a flash balls themselves will still be visible and we can also go ahead and turn on the monochrome logo as well if you guys do want to change the background options that is completely optional as well let's click on done and now one thing to note is that the fov can actually have an impact on your fps so as you guys saw i was getting 1800 fps so let me just change the fov to the highest possible settings as you guys can see my fps has actually dropped from 1800 to 1650 all because of the fov so if i was to go back into my fov settings here and actually reduce it to 60 which i think is a nice playable fov setting and it should actually give us a better fps boost so as you guys can see i am now getting 1900 fps so my fps has actually gone up compared to what I was getting before on the normal FOV and the highest FOV. And as you guys can see, I am actually touching 2000 FPS there now. I did mention that turning the render regions to on actually changes the game for me. So when I do play in windowed mode, it makes my FPS better. So let me go ahead and leave that on for now. And let me go and change my game to full screen mode. So I'm gonna press F11 on my keyboard now. As you guys can see, my FPS has actually gone down to 1,700 FPS. Now, even if I was to go and change the render regions to off, that would still reduce my FPS and not give me the 2,000 FPS which I was getting. So let's go ahead and turn that setting to on, as you guys can see. And now I'm going to press F11 again on my keyboard. And as you guys can see, my FPS has gone back up to 2000 FPS. And now it's actually touching 2100 FPS. So in my opinion, these are the best settings to use with Optifine on Minecraft Java Edition version 1.18.1. And obviously, if you guys are on a low end system, then hopefully this should give you some type of boost in your game. If you guys are getting more than 100 FPS, or 200 fps then you can actually go ahead and start to try out and use shader packs like i showed you earlier and to do that just go to your options click on video settings click on shaders and then you can go ahead and enable the shaders to use inside your game from that menu hopefully you guys have found this video useful if you have please do give us a like if you have any comments or queries about getting the best optifine settings for your minecraft java game on version 1.18.1 then do leave them in the comment section below if you have any questions about how to download and install Optifine for Minecraft Java 1.18.1 again, leave them in the comment section below. Do make sure to check out the description because I am going to leave you guys some links to different video tutorials that might help you out. And also, please do subscribe to this channel to help support it, help it grow. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.